by the way, you guys, just in terms of, you know, the subject of the year, if you decide to kill someone, and I'm not suggesting that you should, but if you decide to, for God's sakes, do the rest of the country a favor, and if you use gloves, wear those clippy things. <laughs> we don't need to sit through that crap again. I'm a big Clinton supporter. I would like him uh, to be president. You know, I like him. Uh, I think one thing, you know, he campaigned on chains, and certainly he's brought that about. You know, he doesn't have some dog greeting him at the helicopter. I think that alone, <laughs> that alone is change enough for me. I think all those presidents who had dogs greet them at the helicopter were creating a false sense of security for themselves. You know. What was that slobbery thing that Bush had, that thing that wrote all those books? What was that dog's name? <laughs> yeah, Millie. No matter what Bush did, every time he come off that helicopter, that dog run over, slobber all over. Oh, great job, Mr. President. <laughs> we don't care who you vomit on. We love you. Come on out of there. <laughs> Clinton, Clinton gets greeted at the uh, helicopter by Sox, the cat. You often don't see her on the news footage because of the propellers. She gets blown back into the trees, but she's there. That's okay. I saw, I saw a, an interview with Ralph Reed the other day where he said that, uh, you know, he thought Colin Powell was pro-family. I thought, well, okay, that narrows the pack politically, doesn't it? What is, what is pro-family? What politician goes forward and says, you know, it's the family I hate? Until we get the money out of politics, it doesn't really matter like what issues you're behind. They're not really going to be serviced. It doesn't matter which way you feel about it because you have to raise money. And therefore, one of the most powerful groups in, in our form of government, unfortunately, is the NRA, which is a staggering thought. They, uh, and I know there's probably some NRA people in here. There's probably some supporters. And I know the argument, the Second Amendment, the Second Amendment, oh, oh the right to bear arms. Well, that's not the whole text of the Second Amendment. You know, it's, not, it's, it's for the purpose of a well-organized militia, not so that crazy neighbor Bob can have an Uzi. <laughs> Every now and then I kind of play devil's advocate with myself even, and I say, well, maybe that is what they meant. Maybe they did mean so that everybody could have a gun if they particularly chose to. And then I think, well, yeah, but they weren't thinking about... They were thinking about <laughs> And then I think, well, certainly Ben Franklin was quite a visionary. He certainly knew about a lot of things ahead of time. Maybe he did mean that kind of a gun. Maybe that is what I meant. And then I think, well, maybe they were wrong. We have this way of revering our forefathers as if they never made a mistake. Well, you know, they may be like our real fathers. They weren't right about everything. <laughs> they had slaves. They had slaves, they wore layers upon layers of clothing in a sweaty hot summer in Philadelphia when they wrote the Constitution, for God's sakes. They're like sweating like hideous pigs passing the wig powder. I don't think they were right about everything. 